Hey, it's Squidly. This is not gonna be an exhaustive list of every skill that you could possibly need to go backpacking. That would take hours. Instead, this is just gonna be a brief overview of some basic things uh, from my most recent trip that are skills that you need in order to enjoy your trip in the outdoors. I'm gonna be on a weekend uh, backpacking trip with Crow from As the Crow Flies Hiking. And this is not gonna be a, uh, a, a trip report like I typically would do like this. Instead, what I'm gonna go over uh, at every stage of the day uh, is just a kind of a brief description of some of the skills that backpackers need to have in order to, to do this and be successful at it and, and be able to enjoy the trip. I once read an article where it described backpackers as just cattle. Uh, walking along a path without any thought as to where we're going or how we're getting there. And it, it was basically in the article, it was kind of elevating people who did off trail stuff. I don't get into all that kind of thing, but I will say that even for backpackers who stick to trails, you still need some navigation skills. Now there are whole courses that are taught on being able to navigate in the backcountry. That's not really what I'm suggesting, but some basic skills in being able to read a map and read a compass and read uh, an electronic map and have some idea of where you're going and what uh, and, and some some more advanced skills like reading contour lines so you can see the elevation gain and loss. Those are some valuable skills that would be useful in the backcountry. Being able to uh, navigate and know which way you're going and uh, and be familiar enough with your route that when you come to a sign like this in an intersection, you know which way to go. Uh, at this intersection, the trail for the uh, Chinobee, but that will get me to the Chinobee Silent Trail goes that way. This is the Skyway Trail. And this part, this on this intersection, that's the Pinhoti Trail going to Claremont Gap. Once you're in camp, one of the most enjoyable experiences is having a campfire. Now there's nothing wrong with a campfire. There are leave no trace principles surrounding a campfire and kind of some, some basic things to do um, with, with having a campfire and doing it safely. First of all, you know, make sure you're using an existing fire ring. Don't create a new scar in the back country from a, a fire. Uh, just use what's already there, uh, clear out around uh, the fire ring to make sure that uh, what's outside the fire ring doesn't accidentally catch fire and then spread to the rest of the forest and just burn the whole thing down. And then monitoring your fire, staying with your fire. Don't turn your back on it. Don't leave it uh, because if it, if it gets out of control and there's no one there, you know, well, obviously you, you know how the end of that story will go. And while I was out on my most recent trip, I had these thoughts on a fire that was left still smoldering. So here's a skill worth noting. Uh, if you're gonna have a campfire, that's fine. There is nothing better than a campfire in camp, either at night or in the morning to warm yourself, to have something to sit around and kind of stoke the conversation. But when you're through with it, you can't leave it like this. Uh, and we're right here by a stream. It's just right there. And it's an easy trip to bring a little bit of water and put this out where it's cold to the touch. All right, three liter bag and I poured it on here twice. It took me all of about 45 seconds. It's too easy not to do it. One of the leave no trace principles is pack it in, pack it out. And basically what that means is anything that you bring out there and you take with you on a backpacking trip, plan on packing it out with you. Don't leave your trash in the backcountry. Now, I wish that that was something that could just go without saying, but it has to be said because there are still people who leave their trash out in the backcountry. I don't understand it, I don't get that, but they do. In addition to this smoking campfire, you can also see uh, somebody left a can in the fire ring. Uh, one of the, and this is just a basic skill uh, of going backpacking is, is pack it in, pack it out. Whatever trash you bring with you, 
take it out with you. It's just not that hard. Uh, they they ate the heaviest part of that and then left the lightest part of it, uh, which to me just doesn't make any sense. But um, if you pack it in, pack it out. One skill that's learned over time and experience as a great teacher is knowing how to layer your clothes for comfort and uh, to make sure that you're not um, excessively cold or hot. Now, that seems really obvious, but you would be surprised uh, that experience teaches you that you don't need a single heavy layer, that what you need are several lighter layers if you're going in winter or going in some, some cooler weather. This way you can add or remove layers uh, to get that perfect level of comfort while you're moving or after you've stopped uh, so that you're not uh, shivering, getting cold, or excessively hot. The day is really warming up. And when we started this morning, I think the low was like 27 degrees. It was really cool. And so I had a lot of extra layers and I've stopped to take uh, some layers off because I was getting warm enough to sweat. And in the winter time, sweat is your enemy because you're even though i'm wearing all um water resistant clothes and hydrophobic clothes i it uh if they get damp uh, when the temperature drops you're going to feel it and you're going to be uncomfortable so time to layer down except for the leave no trace principles backpacking has very few hard and fast rules but there are some kind of guiding principles that will help you to maneuver in the backcountry without getting lost or doing things that are really unsafe that could be, well, life-threatening. One of those is on crossing a stream. Now, most of the streams that I encounter in the backpacking that I do are mild enough that you can just walk on a cross and, and not worry about it. Uh, but there are situations after heavy rains uh, in the spring with heavy snow melt that could present hazards for crossing streams. For this stream, this water is, this is kind of high, uh, but this is not so high that it's uh, even approaching being dangerous. There's just not that much volume. Uh, it's deep enough to be dangerous if it were moving fast enough, but uh, I'm gonna be crossing right there and it's not gonna be any deeper than about knee deep. What I'm gonna do is unbuckle my waist belt, unbuckle my sternum strap, and put on my stream crossing shoes and just be prepared to be wet up to my knees. Everything that we need to know to get along with others, we learned in kindergarten. In backpacking, we have to share the trail, we share campsites, and we share shelters. When it comes to sharing, you have to be willing to set yourself aside and put others first uh, and consider what others are experiencing and, and what others are uh, going through and what their needs are, and not just think about only ourselves. That sounds so basic. <laughs> it sounds like I'm talking to kindergartners or first graders, uh, but unfortunately I'm talking to adults and, and sometimes I'm even talking to myself. I have to remind myself, hey, there are others out here who want to experience this without me imposing on them. So I'm at Chiha Shelter and that brings up another topic here, which is uh, trail etiquette and in particular here, shelter etiquette. Uh, just being willing to share the space and uh, not act like a complete buffoon and also understand there's something called hiker midnight, which is not long after nightfall. Uh, hikers are tired. They're going to bed. They're trying to, trying to sleep. Uh, so going to a shelter with the idea of throwing a party, it's probably not good etiquette. This last skill is really about knowing your gear. And I'm gonna be honest with you, that's one of the things about backpacking that's really fun is researching, shopping for, buying, and getting new gear. It's just fun. So the skill here is know that gear, know what it can do, know what it's capable of, know what its limitations are, and know how to use it. While I was out on that most recent trip, I had some thoughts on this subject while I was setting up my tent. All right, we're in camp, and the sun is setting pretty quickly now, and uh, so we're kind of hurrying to 
get our tent set up, which brings us to the next uh, skill, which is setting up a tent. Now, not necessarily setting up this tent, but just a tent. Uh, and whatever tent you have, before you get out here, you need to make yourself familiar with it. Uh, get out in the backyard or to a park and practice setting it up. Set it up, tear it down. Set it up, tear it down. And if people are looking at you thinking, what is that fool doing? That's their issue, not yours. Now, before you say it in the comments, I know there are probably a hundred more skills I could have put in this video. That's not what this video was for. This was just for some basic things that most people would encounter or have to deal with on a backpacking trip. So instead of getting mad at me for missing some, instead in the comments, tell me what I missed. Be gentle about it, but tell me what I missed and what we could also include is, is some basic skills. And let's have a conversation about that. As always, on the way out, don't forget to hit like and subscribe.